as legendary as the mustached man who drove it, let's talk about the Ferrari 308 GTS. This is a reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel. My mustache is coming off. Uh, if you want to see great content like this, you want to see me dressed up in a mustache, uh, seeing, uh, reviewing great cars, you want to be subscribed to that. How could you want to miss that? So make sure that button says subscribe below. We give away a $250 gas card. You could be the lucky winner. You're winning mustaches. You're winning gift cards. What more could you want? The GTS is one for the books. And I have to say it's pretty much an 80s legend on its own. Now. I'm gonna take this off. All right, that's a little bit better. <laughs> Back to the video. So today we're gonna be taking a look at this uh, 80s legend, this Ferrari 308 GTS. Um, it's gorgeous. We're gonna give you a spotlight look. I'm gonna talk about the history, the performance, and I'm gonna give you a tour of the exterior and the interior. So let's get to it. If you love fast cars, the 80s reign supreme for supercar starring roles. And probably one of the most iconic would have to be the starring prancing pony of Magnum PI. Set in Hawaii, America's favorite private investigator was on the air for a whopping eight years and this red Ferrari was one of the stars. Designed by Panini Farina and built by Scaglietti, Ferrari's 308 GTB was released in 1975 after the redesign of the Dino 246 GT and they produced about 12,000 total. A few years prior to the show's release and after catching a redesign with some fresh new angles and replacing the frame from fiberglass to steel, the 308 Target Top GTS took off in popularity with the show's release. In fact, the opening credits featured as much Tom Selleck as they did the 308 GTS, with the theme song being extended and peaking the charts at number 25 in 1982, which was unheard of. With as many as five manual Ferraris used per season on Magnum PI, some of these vehicles actually ended up doubling their costs and going for as much as 181,000 USD. As mentioned previously, the show spanned for about eight years, and this was the final version that was introduced in 1982, which was the Quattro Favole. The Quattro Favole actually means in Italian, four valves per cylinder, which was the exact upgrade that was used in this final version. While it's not the first Ferrari in line to lap the track, the beauty lies in its build with a mid-mounted three liter V8 engine backed by a five speed manual transmission on rear wheels, pumping out 240 horsepower and hitting a top speed of 156 miles per hour. Next, let's take a look at the design. As previously mentioned, the 308 GTS was about the 80s refresh from the previous 70s, which meant the lines got a lot sharper. They added a slim louvered panel in the front lid to aid radiator exhaust air exit, power operated mirrors with a small enamel Ferrari badge etched in that you can see, and the radiator grille was redesigned featuring rectangular driving lights on each side to keep with the redesigned look. From the iconic Ferrari Rosso Corsa paint, from the tan leather down to the brown carpeting, this European legend remains one of the most beautiful Ferraris of its time. The wheels are 16 inch Speedline wheels with Pirelli P7 tires with the infamous Ferrari emblem in the center. Now while the Ferraris on Magnum PI had to be retrofitted because Tom Selleck was too tall, me myself, I'm five foot five, so I have to say that I fit quite comfortably inside here, which is good because the satin black three spoke steering wheel doesn't move at all, which makes driving a bit stiff when you're trying to get comfortable. And given the year of the make and the tech at the time, performance clutches felt much heavier and required some effort. Now this really is a European classic with this removable Targa roof that can actually be stored right in this space here behind the seats. In typical vintage sports car fashion, you have a gated shifter and with analog gauges and instruments, this vehicle really is a piece of history, not to mention art. It's a classic and we are lucky enough to have one to spotlight. Tom Selleck mustache and all. Drop a comment, leave a like if you want to see more classic car reviews like this one. And remember, nobody beats the deal from the other.